Hi, Janelle here with She Pill Herbs. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to another video. It's a sunny, nice day. It's always a nice day here. So I'm so happy to have you back in today's video. Um, this is Tuesday, so we're going to do like Teaching Tuesday. I need a better name for that. So if you have one, <laughs> leave it in the comment down, comments down below. So Tuesday, I want it to be something um, related to the course I teach, my Home Herbalist course. So I thought Teaching Tuesday, but if you have a better name idea, please share it. I would love it. Uh, so I have a Home Herbalist, bleh, Home Herbalist course program, and it's 10 months in length. And you can join any time so it's not like you have to start at a certain time and it uh you do kind of have to end a certain time it's you have 10 months but uh part of that is um two classes per month that you attend if you live near me if not i direct people to my youtube channel but i've been wanting to make some more specific classes or um videos for that course on here and then also for everyone else to enjoy so before we get started, I have this great botanical herb deck from Mountain Rose Herb. They are in my link tree down in my description. Mountain Rose Herb is in my link tree. And I will be talking about Mountain Rose Herb in this video because I'm going to share herb quality, talking about the qualities of the herbs that you're using. And so I bought this deck. This is not like an oracle or a tarot deck. It's just a um, really, really nice botanical drawing artwork deck with, um, I couldn't tell you the, the number of cards, but it's quite a bit. Um, identification and then information about the plant. So I'm going to pull our card today for the herb of the day. And I don't want to, I don't want to look, but I'm just kind of putting my hands over the cards. All right, we're going to go here. This card is for you and me. What is this card? Calamus. A chorus calamus. I mean, make sure you, I'm going to hold it here while I read the back. It's perfect. So this is a perennial herb, grows in shallow water and wet ground along the edges of streams, ponds, and lakes, cosmopolitan in the northern hemisphere. The rootstock of the plant yields the drug calamus, which is used to treat dysentery and toothache. The young spring shoots are edible and commonly used in salads. Confectioners have used the plant rhizomes to make candy, hence its common name, sweet flag. The rootstock itself can be candied with some lengthy preparation. This plant is uh, sometimes used to improve the flavor of gin. Calamus is similar in appearance to the poisonous iris. So I have to say, I do not have any experience, firsthand experience with this herb. So interesting. I am going to think on this plant today and um, probably go to Mount Rose Herb and see what they have on it. And sometimes it's helpful just to look at the plant and get like a feel for the plant from pictures. So maybe you want to look up some other pictures of calamus. Okay, so before we get started, if you could like, subscribe, hit the bell button, comment. Check out my description down below, which has my link tree, which links to everything that is me. And that includes my course program, my newsletter, links to Mount Rose Herb, Thrive Market, and a whole bunch more. So I wanted to talk today about herb quality. So I have my little apothecary back there behind me. And so it's, I feel getting easier and easier to acquire good quality herbs because herbs are um, on people's minds, in their, on their tongues, people talking about it shops and herbalists are becoming more common but when you're working with the plants you want to have a very high quality plant whether it's the fresh or dried or medicinally prepared version of the plant and so typically and this is just a typical kind of blanket statement 
it's better to get your herbs from a smaller company than from something larger and global because typically, like I said, uh, there is a tendency to lose out on quality once a company gets rather big, unless there is enormous integrity in that company uh, for keeping quality and also good care practices. So one company I really like is Mountain Rose Herb. I have bought herbs from them for over a decade. They are out in Oregon and they have grown a lot, but like nowhere near these like mega, you know, multi-billion dollar uh, worldwide companies. I trust their products, their herbs. I trust their plants. I trust where they source the plants. They have a lot of really good um, information on their website about the farms and farmers and just like good practices. When I first purchased their herbs, because I was getting um, herbs from other places and mainly shops and stuff, I just was blown away by the quality. I could tell it immediately. And uh, the characteristics that you're looking for are color, color retention. And knowing what your plant looks like fresh is really important to knowing what you should have when it's dried. The color should be retained. And so if you're buying herbs somewhere cheap, like you're like, okay, I'm gonna go on Amazon and just buy this, you know, horsetail or um, I'm gonna buy some um, Tulsi or something like that. And they have a really great deal. You might wanna compare the price on Mountain Rose Herbs because they have good prices for the herb and they're not like overblowing the price. But if you find it somewhere super cheap and you think you're getting a deal, you might not be getting 100% of the herb or it could uh, be picked from a place where it's not ideal or the soil was not great or there were pesticides or it was cut with other herbs or it could be old herbs. So you want to know like the color it should be, the color it retains. Smell is the next factor. So you want your herbs to have a really good, strong smell. Uh, some herbs have a lesser fragrance and you would get used to that over time of purchasing and you know just handling plants. Like for instance, lavender obviously has a very high essential oil, volatile oil content and your lavender flowers, especially if you bought a pound, would be very fragrant. Whereas, um, let's say parsley leaf dried is not fragrant at all. Even if you get good quality, it still is, there's very little fragrance at all. I personally don't even like to use dried parsley because of the lack of um, pungency in the taste. So I either use it fresh or the root. The root can retain a lot more of that strong vitality. So besides color and smell, there's taste. If you get a chance to taste the herb, uh, do so. And so the herb should be um, quite like the plant. <laughs> and all of this requires time and practice. So like if you think of any food that you are very familiar with, whether let's say it's an apple and you've had hundreds and hundreds of apples, you know when you get an apple that's not quite right where the um, skin seems sprayed funny or it's mushy or it doesn't have flavor or um, it's abnormally large and you wonder if it's GMO. So herbs are the same way. Like I'm recommending to you a company I trust, Mountain Rose Herb, uh, if you have other people recommend them companies to you, it's good to go from recommendations. There's a place in Pennsylvania, and I don't get credit for this, it's called Tooth of the Lion, and she has a farm. So she's farming and collecting her plants and, and then processing them. Uh, so I trust, I trust her. I trust her plants because it's a smaller kind of company. There's another one in Vermont called Free Verse Apothecary. Again, they have their own small farms, so they are um, growing and harvesting a lot of their plants, and so um, the quality is being retained. So what other senses? Uh, sound could be another, another sense that you want to follow. 
Your herbs should be crinkly. They should be dry so that they, uh, you know that they are dried properly. If you're drying yourself, you wait until they do have that little bit of a crunch sound or a crinkle sound so you know that they are not retaining water and then um, would possibly mold. So mold is a big concern when you are getting herbs. I mean, it's a concern with lots of food and that would be coffees, other teas, and just food from the grocery store. You do not wanna have molds in your herbs. So when you're storing them, you wanna put them in jars. Uh, everything has to be totally dry and out of the sun. And uh, when you purchase them, you want to make sure you're getting uh, herbs from places where they took great care in storing uh, in the locations where they were storing them. So it does require a little bit of trial and error if you want to, you know, check out places that have different herbs or, or herb shops that are near you. Uh, but you're going to use your senses. What other sense did I miss? Touch, taste. Um, sound. Well, touch it didn't really go into, but there is a quality of touch that's important, just like when you're work, working with food and, um, the feel of the plant, it, it, it can be very familiar. So I wouldn't discount touch, but you're often not going to get to do the touch, uh, when you purchase something. It's usually going to be by sight, so the color and possibly smell. Those are probably the two biggest ways that you're going to know and see quality before you make a purchase of the herbs. And just like common sense, if you're buying somewhere, maybe I shouldn't say common sense, intuition. Like, how do you feel about the place where you're buying? Are there other products good? Uh, do they normally have good quality? Do they have good ratings? All of that comes into play. And uh, so for the most part, I think most people are shopping and buying herbs and not doing all of the growing and drying on their own. So this video is more about kind of giving you things to look for as you go shop. So I hope you like this video. If you haven't left your comment, leave it now. Check out my description down below for my link tree and I have Mountain Rose Herb right there. Best place that I know to buy your herbs bulk and you can start your own apothecary like I have back there. So thank you so much and come again soon.